Hey everyone, Joe Nardella here from the Face Off Factory. Middle of the college lacrosse season, wanted to take a moment and kind of do our mid-season update presented by Face Off Factory and now Foods. We're really gonna dive into D1 first, maybe take a look at uh, some D2 and some D3 guys that are showing really good things early in the season. And as we kind of get into conference play, the stakes are elevated. A few of my takeaways from early in the season is that you know some of these guys who are really athletic are becoming more and more successful given the new rules with standing neutral grip. Without further ado, we're gonna get right into D1 and just kind of rounding out our top five, we have Zach Cole at number one from St. Joe's, Luke Weirman from Maryland at two, Mike Sisselberger back in the top five after finishing first last year. He's number three from Lehigh, Justin Whitefelt four from Michigan, and Justin Inacio five. And with three of the five guys in the top five being from the Big Ten, we're going to start there. You know, Weirman in the combo of Whitefelt and Rowlett at Michigan have been really strong to start the season. Inacio and Blanchard at Ohio State have done really well also. And then Jonathan Dehenio has been a really positive spark for Rutgers, rated about 57% playing a tough schedule, so I think they're a team that can compete with all those guys as well. Penn State and Hopkins are kind of the lower tier teams in terms of face-offs in that conference right now. Next, we're going to go into the Ivy League. I think the Ivy League has been particularly strong, you know, all over the place, but at the face-off dot particularly, we have Sandoval, Nick Ramsey, Gunty, and Zussi, you know, all in the top 25. Mitch Myers from Dartmouth up there as well. Cornell's been scrapping with some of the teams. They had a great showing this week in their midweek performance against a top 10 guy in Colgate. And I think Harvard continues to do really well against some of these top guys, making the, the, the lives of their opponents extremely difficult to pull in the wing. So I think the Ivy League's a gauntlet. Maybe they're a little step below the Big Ten in terms of their overall percentages, but overall really, really competitive conference. It'll be interesting to see who takes the specialist of the year there. I think the ACC really is Naso, Fop, Tucci, and LaSala, right? Those four guys are going to be neck and neck all season. I think their matchups are must watch every single week. You know, Notre Dame's really showed some flashes in recent weeks, and I think they'll compete against all those teams as well. In the America East, Tommy Burke seems to be the clear favorite, but Renz Conlon's been doing a great job at Stony Brook. I think those two guys are due for a big matchup coming up here in the next few weeks. Patriot League, Sisselberger's obviously the known. Connor Calderon's had a really strong season transferring from Maryland to BU, and Tom Colucci from Colgate's in the top 10. So the Patriot League, like kind of sneaky, has three guys in the top 10, another super competitive conference. The Big East is loaded with James Riley, Justin Coppola, and Alex Staphicus. All those guys are in the top 12, right? So another really strong conference. Um, and then I think our surprises, this isn't a surprise that Zach Cole's first this year, but he had a 100% game this past week, and I think he's crushing it. His pro stock's got to be rising. Long Island Universities has a huge turnaround from a year ago. Justin Joseph's really developed and been good. Dimitri George is consistently, you know, top of the Mac. I think Luke Williams and Caleb Hammett are sophomores who've kind of stepped up this year and really taken on a leadership role, showcasing like 57, 50%, 58% season so far. And I think the second half of the season will really show us who our All-Americans and standouts are going to be. And I think you keep your, your eyes on those guys in the Big Ten, the Patriot League, and the Big East because they all have tough, tough matchups coming up. Their stats are really good right now. We'll see if it levels off a little bit. I don't see, you know, like a guy like Tommy Burke or any of the ACC guys like Naso, Fop, Tucci, or even the Ivy League with Sandoval, Ramsey, and Gumpty. Those guys could make a push to get into that top ten depending on how they do in conference play. So I'm super excited to see that. Part two of our mid-season update presented by Face Off Factory and Now Foods, we have Division Two. Cam Weeks from Anderson's been lights out at 84%. Logan Gray, who we talked about preseason, as well as Sean Duran. Those guys are right in the 73% range. They've both been doing great as well. Mitch Streety kind of rides as 73%, and Kevin Horowitz from Florida Southern, all top five above 70%. So it does tell you that some of their games may be lopsided in terms of their face-off stats, but I'm really looking forward to conference and postseason play in Division Two to see who really steps up. We got a pair of guys that we coach in the Bentley crew. They're at 70%, and Dylan Checkets, who works with Coach Marino, is also around 70%. He's at number six, so I think all those guys in the top seven could be fighting for All-American uh, contention, and we'll see how these conference and postseason play shakes out in Division Two. but it should be really exciting to watch. Ton of talent that goes under the radar and I respect a lot of the games that these guys have been putting up and showcasing.
Next up, Division Three on our midseason update. We're going to start with MIT freshman Matthew Sardis. He's been lights out 76% this year. I think anyone who can come in and make an impact right away like probably has Division One talent. He's been nothing short of exceptional. We have the dual-headed monster at Union with Matthew and Sam going around 68, 69% each. Those guys are a machine. We also have a two-headed monster at Wesleyan with Talbot and Tyler Campbell. Those guys have been excellent too, both 65% plus. Davis Cronin um, out of Denison's knocking it out of the park, 66.7. Grant Evans around 66% from Grove City. He's another guy who's been really good in the past. And then some of the guys that you know we're familiar with and have seen do really well are also having strong 60% plus seasons. Ethan Barnard at Bowdoin, Reese Hornstein at Conn College, Patty Condon at St. Lawrence, Ethan Style at Brockport and Joe Post from St. John Fisher. All these guys are studs. I think D3 is always interesting because it comes down to, you know, who can play, you know, the best over the course of the entire season. They sometimes play more games than a Division II um, school. And I think when we see these teams and these kind of monsters meet up in the playoffs, it's going to be really interesting to watch some of these face-off matchups. So I'm really excited to see what transpires in the latter half of the season in Division Three as well.